Hey guys, I'm Fat Buddy Cat, and this is a Coleman PT200X. I finally did it. I made all my moves, and I upgraded to one of these big boy frames that you guys have all been squawking about. This thing's a little bit heavier than the other Coleman's that I've tried, but it's got the same power plant and gearing that said uh it's less than underwhelming for a guy like me it's going to get modified anyway so we're just going to kick it off by removing everything i don't need out with the old and in with the sword of new. This is all going to be bolt on. First up, the wheels and tires. We get some new knobbies on here. These are similar to the Sun F AO27. I saved a few bucks and went with, I don't know, sort of an off brand. They're four ply. I think they'll get the job done. All new bearings and a 420 62 sprocket. To fix and upgrade the brakes, I'm just using the handle and the 304 G setup off of the CT 200U. I have four bolts, a lock washer, and a larger regular washer on each one of them. These are going to attach our modified 196 to our factory engine plate. We're going on with the intake, PCV, exhaust, torque converter, and everything. The riser plate has four threaded inserts, those are going to get lined up with these four slots. I'm then just going to feed my bolts up from the bottom. Easy peasy. Now I'm going to spin it around and try to fit up a chain. Oh yeah. CT200U chain fit right on here. No problem. I have the engine pulled forward this time. And the axle pulled back from there to set the tension. Everything is spaced out the way it should be. The chain dead straight. That shadow is a little deceiving, but we're good. I rolled it back and forth and we didn't rub. Uh, I'm going to leave the cover off for now. I might do something different with the nylock nut. We don't have a whole lot of threads on there. We have enough, but that thing's seen better days. I'm using the Comet driver for now. We're probably going to be switching out to a Torquezilla. Now I'm going to install a pair of these one PZ foot pegs. Not these nice new ones though. I got some used ones that still have some life in them. I haven't broken a pair yet. These things are cheap and I run them deep. All you have to do is drill out for the slightly bigger dowel. That's the factory job. Booyah. This is a good time to make sure that your tangs are straight and that everything fits. If it didn't, you could either file that down a little bit 
maybe hit it with your grinder or you just spread your little tangs out and then drill your hole that way it's straight Once everything's in place, I check how tight they are. If it's too snug, then I take my hammer and a fat chisel and I hit the corners of the lower tang. One here and right here. That We'll open it up a little bit. I like to keep mine pretty snug because, well, once my considerable bulk gets on there, they have a tendency to open up a little bit on their own. Go figure. Here's how you pro mod your stock gas tank so that you have proper flow for your slide carb. Flip it over and you remove the fuel filter outlet that's on the bottom. There's a threaded hole that it came out of. Well, I re threaded that hole with a 1 8 pipe thread. We're going to be threading in one of these barbs this is for a quarter inch line I trimmed my barb no big deal put it in the vise cut it off with a hacksaw and then let Kyle the file clean it up I'm gonna be using a copper washer and a rubber washer. It could probably go with a copper washer that has a little bit wider wall on it, but this one's going to be sufficient. The idea is that this bolt portion of your barb can't go beyond the washer, and then the washer pinches the rubber, and that creates a seal. You got to be careful when you send in her home. You don't want to go too tight and strip things out. And as you can see, I went good and plenty. I got a good cup on that rubber washer. But it's definitely not getting out from underneath that copper one. And the copper washer itself has a little bit of squish value. So that shouldn't be going anywhere anytime soon or leaking any fluids. If you thread one of these out, make sure you clean it in between. This one's already got a thorough rinse and had time to dry. I have a somewhat long section of quarter inch Tigon fuel line hanging off the bottom of the tank. We're going to be downsizing to 3 16 before we hit the carburetor. That quarter inch is just going to make introducing our inline filter and shutoff valve a little bit easier. We're going to want that filter and valve outside of our sheet metal. So we'll mount the tank, let our tail hang out, and then worry about that after. I'm running the ARC side cover with a straight barb and a line going up to my valve cover for my block vent. That is preventing my gas tank from sitting down where it needs to be. There's not enough threads on those studs to space that thing up and then tighten it down. And it's definitely not going to line up in the back either, where it anchors. So, 
and came up with a solution. This tab is bolted directly to the factory tank mounts on the block. I used some heavy washers and nylock nuts on those. These two holes are going to receive the studs from the gas tank. So we just moved it forward, but where that angle's involved, it also moves it up as you go forward. The small tab gets attached to the back of the gas tank via that threaded hole. We'll flip the tank over and now we're going to add an anti-vibration element to this thing. Get a piece of foam, not too hard, not too soft. I think you know where that came from. <clears throat> uh, I've spilt oil and gas on this. It's probably got oil and gas with a coat of spray paint on it right now. Hasn't had much of an effect on it, so I think it'll work here too. Drilled a couple holes. Those line up with the studs. We're going to put this ugly side up because up is going to eventually be down. Uh, long bolt. It's going to be tricky to get it through when the tank is in position. We're going to send it through now. It goes bolt, washer, forget about that for right now. Then it goes through the tab, and then that spacer is going to go on. Just like that. It's a lot easier with two hands. You got to hold the washer in place and then feed the bolt through. It gets a little tight with the head, but once you start sending it, it comes right out the other side. Once it does, put my one inch spacer on. Now I'm going to lower it into position. While I'm lowering it, I'm going to send that bolt through this hole. The studs come down and through in the front. I then added a washer, a lock washer, and an eye lock nut to each one. I have to tighten those before we set the rear. As we tighten this down, it's going to suck in the bottom of the tank and it's going to open up that gap between the anchor point on the block and the tab. When it does, the spacer is going to fall in place. Maybe fall wasn't the best word. You still have to work it a little bit. The nice part is you can back this bolt off and loosen it so that you can pivot the tab while you're guiding it through. You still have a little bit of play while it's loose, but not a lot. I have a couple washers and another nylock nut. I get that on, tighten her down, and finish the job. When I am tightening it, we tighten the rear first. And we just have to go enough to pinch the lock washer. The nylock nut will do its thing. That is seriously affixed to this block now. In the front, I'm going to try snugging it up. It might pinch the lock washer. I probably could have done without those. 
they're sort of squished. I thought where I used just like a regular grade steel lock washer that the resistance from the foam would be enough to get it all the way. I could take those off and just put regular washers, but it's not going to go anywhere. And neither is this tank. I just don't have to go any tighter than that. I, that's crazy. A lot better than I expected. That was worth the effort. It took me a few hours to make those. I was so overcome with joy that I almost forgot to tighten the bolt that holds that small tab in the rear onto the tank. Oops. We're out of there now, though. Let me get my sheet metal back on. I just knocked out the fuel line and rerouted my PCV as well. Things are looking good from this side. I'm spinning around and take a look over yonder, but uh, now we can see from here we're clearing the block vent barb. No problem. The line's not kinked. Now we'll take a look. Got a nice gentle sweep to it. That'll be a-okay. Now, we're going to get the handlebars on. These are the Megamoto handlebars that I had on the 200EX. And they're going to go back on the 200EX. I don't really like them on the BT. It's not the height. It's just, well, you sit a little flatter on this mini bike. And you're going to have a tendency to push on those handlebars. Especially with that sweet suspension. You might find yourself on some jumps or something, right? When you come down... Your handlebars act as a lever. Here's your handle. You have a shaft and a pivot. When you increase the length of the shaft, you decrease the workload that is needed to move it at the pivot. That means you're going to need less torque to move those handlebars forward or backwards. Since we like the height, we have to figure out how to acquire that same distance without increasing the pivot. We're going to do that by extending the riser and running a slightly shorter handlebar. I have some genuine Tusk risers and some aftermarket pit bike handlebars. They look to be a fairly nice Pro Taper knockoff. They're about 30 bucks. Did I save anything going this way? Uh, not necessarily. I think the... Well, this is probably like 50 bucks. I think the Pro Tapers are like 70 bucks now. So I guess we did save, but... What we're after is... Saving myself as well. So, let me get these off. And 
I'll get these in place. It seems pretty simple. This is down, this is up. You got this. Come on, bro. I don't think it can get any better than that. These riser extensions are aluminum. They come in that silver. I guess you could paint them, but I love the way it goes. Black, silver, black, silver, black, silver, black, silver, black. I mean, that is just, yeah, loving it. Uh, I don't have them set. I mean, I'm pretty close to center. I only have the two bolts in. They do have these nice little gauges on them, which made that a breeze. Uh, I think we're going to trim them, though, a little bit wide. They also have a gauge for that. I'm going to grab my throttle and I'll stick the housing on there and see where we're at for space. I have my throttle, kill switch, and brake lever introduced to the situation. I think we're going to go right next to that four. It feels pretty neutral. It won't run out of room towards the bend. We tighten the lever down. If the grip were right there. Yep. That'll work. So we're going to take probably a healthy inch off of each end these things are actually some pretty thick aluminum it's not too bad for 30 bucks I just used some painters tape to create a straight edge that way I got a nice clean cut I get that off and then just clean up the end so I don't have any burrs. I might hit them with some paint. They're aluminum and they're going to be under the grips anyway, so whatever. If you want to get an almost factory like finish on the end of these bars, just go around the outside radius real easy with a flapper wheel. You then grab a big honking drill bit and you work it real slow that way you can get that taper just like the pros I have everything right where I like it I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it down and then Add my throttle. I just threw a little gas in the tank and hooked up the throttle while I was waiting to see if anything leaked. It didn't. So then I finished with my grips, my kill switch, and I zip tied everything nice and neat.
try my best not to lose control. Grass soaking wet. It's going to rain more, so this is our only opportunity to test things out. The lens is going to get wet. I'll try my best to dry it off. of uh, traction we seem to get some forward momentum see all those little canals those treads ripped 
that's some slick stuff. Okay, we're through it. You guys see? Yeah, you're all right. We'll get that back on. I'm about to hose her down. I figured we take a look first. Most of the mud ended up on the bottom of the seat and the back of my sweatshirt. The front actually didn't do too bad. I mean, it's not like the front tire was slinging it up like the rear anyway. Yummy. Uh, two things I noticed. The sprocket is caked in mud. Some of it came off on my way over here. The majority of it was pushed right in there. The other thing I saw were some shiny spots on this back edge of the pulley. It's also a little rough. So, surprised we didn't blow the master link off instead of pushing the chain off the sprocket. This is a gold on black 420, so it's pretty beefy stuff. I think we had a combination platter here of a clearance issue and, I mean, just a ridiculous amount of mud. Some of you may have noticed the longer axle that I have installed. This is one off of the CT200U with the rack. Uh, the reason I have that is for the factory spacing. And I'm not talking about centering the wheel. That's not going to happen. What I'm talking about is 
the spacing from the edge of the frame to the actual hardware on this side that would be you know the bearing but really the brake assembly when this washer was not there in stock format if you tightened the axle all the way the brake would bind no matter what position you were in on the slot so as far as tension with the chain I corrected that and I don't think that one washers width is throwing us out enough to cause an issue up there at that pulley that's just not that big of a distance I have the engine all the way forward right now that can come back so we can shorten that distance uh, right now I'm gonna go ahead and loosen things up get the chain back on and we're gonna take a look at the pulley itself where I think the chain was contacting I actually haven't loosened anything up yet I got the chain out from behind these bolts on the you know, we'll call it the hub portion and I lifted it back up onto the sprocket it's really tight and I'm not on yet I don't think it was a lack of tension hmm <clears throat> we definitely had the frame rails sitting right on the terra firma so we had the side walls of that rut all right pushing up as the bike was going down and this was spinning around whether that was enough to just pull the chain off or push it off oh it may have been i'll loosen it up and get her all the way on i popped it forward and that chain dropped right onto the sprocket it's good and loose now put some tension on it and we'll take a look at the alignment Besides that pesky shadow from the pulley again, I'm going to try to put a light on it. We're looking really straight. I would say I'm going all the way around on that pulley. I don't seem to be hitting the chain. I mean, we might be close, but we're not touching. When it loosens up, it could. We'll take the pulley off and we'll try to work that lip back with the flapper wheel and the angle grinder that'll solve that uh, maybe pull the engine back take a link out of the chain pull the wheel forward i'm sure there's a few different things i can try here The only other thing would be blunt force trauma that did us in. Well, I'll be darned. 
Looks like it was the alignment after all. We were straight, but on something of a diagonal here. We have a nice piece of tubing here. So give us a nice lineal line. I'm holding it up against my rear sprocket. I'll use my other hand. Okay. There. I'm flush with the rear. All right. Let me bring the front all the way in like it was. Okay. I'm going to go flush with the rear again. And I'll bring it forward. Look at there. We should be centered. Well, not centered. We should be aligned with the back side of that little nine tooth there. And we are not right there. Okay. So, what happened? That's more than a washer, I would say. I used a rim off of the CT200U. Maybe the EX. They should all be the same. They could have... Little differences in the installation. I don't think we're twisted at the plate or the engine. I could loosen it up and see if I can pivot the engine a little bit. But I know I'm going to be at least a washer or two on the shaft. And we're going to run out of threads for the pulley. Let me try to space it out and see what happens here. Well, I'm not gonna jump ahead of myself and say that that this is the problem, but it's likely that this is the problem. You see what I'm seeing? This is the rim that came on this BT200X and I made a rookie mistake and I went ahead and assumed that it was the same rim that was on the CT200U EX and CT200U. Now that's just the front side but can you see the difference? Look right here. Uh oh. Look at the lip. Whoa, buddy. Uh. Hmm. Different manufacturers of different rims, I guess. Both the EX and the U were older. This is basically a brand new one. We flip it over, we'll look at the brake side. They look a little bit different, but not as different as the other side did. Well, I greased that factory bearing up real good. She's good as new. We got a replacement over here. That's packed with grease spacer. The only thing different now is the tire. And I'll get the steel 62 sprocket on there and see how things line up then. That's kind of a pain. Well, that's a bit of a relief. Just enough to change the tire over. I'm getting 
the same result I'm off center and towards the face of my nine tooth but I'm on the back side of my 60 tooth okay I went back to the axle and stock spacing that seems to have fixed the lock braking problem um obviously I'd rather do the washer and longer axle see how you run out here and run it the other way that way I don't have to change the tire everything else will be the same that means our issue is going to be somewhere up here oh I hope that you think I didn't even consider that I hope the side cover isn't pushing us out because we're on one of these riser plates that I've used a lot of times I'll loosen the engine up and see if it can pivot I'm pretty sure that's straight I mean I was pretty sure about this too and technically I still am Oh, that's going to be something if that's what it is, because... Mm, no, because that... If we came out more... This way... Right? Then that would have to go more... That way. We have to come out... This way. Something ain't right. what a mess a little bit further into my investigation and this is what i find this bolt was making contact with this torque converter plate right there i didn't notice it before and i'm not sure if we tweak this thing and it's cast aluminum I'm gonna remove this bolt I'm just gonna get it right out of the situation trim the sheet metal so I'll have to take it off and put it back on and then I'm gonna use a new plate nah guy even with all that we're still not gonna get it i just went ahead and switched back to the ex rim with the tire that i want i have the engine loose you ready for it that's the pivot Okay, so you basically have square and out of square. At our closest point, we were out of square. That's going to bind. So, we're going to do this the proper way. I just ordered up an adapter. And this is actually a 54 tooth, which we're going to try instead of a 60 tooth. But what this should do is we'll put the adapter on in place of this sprocket and then we'll be able to offset this to the back side of the adapter and we'll shift our sprocket over into alignment with the front one. That way we have all the shaft and threads we need for the pulley. Over on the other side... I can't even begin to tell you which axle I actually chose, but it is a little longer. And I do have the proper spacing for my brake. So, 
this thing spins and it'll stop and it won't bind up if I so much as take that washer out or I try to use a smaller one and I bring this over when it's tight the brake locks right up so we're gonna have to let this simmer at least about three to four business days so my parts come in this will give us just enough time to build a whole nother mini bike there's sort of a lot to do but I think we can get the job done have a good night guys thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one